Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 6 of Kenshi Birth of a Hive. So if you're new to my channel, uh, you probably don't know this, but I often put up polls to allow my viewers to vote on how the series takes shape. So today is the vote day. If you'd like to vote, go to Radamont.com or the announcement channel of Discord, or just click the little info card at the top right. It will bring you to the website, and the top news feed of the website will be the link to the poll. Everyone can vote, and I welcome your feedback. So the items that you're going to find on the poll are primarily uh, stuff that I've been uh, accumulating, crowdsourcing from all of you over the past uh, week or, or so, about where you think I should live, uh, what mods I should include, that kind of thing. Uh, so if you'd like to go vote, I invite you to do it. And thank you to everyone that has uh, supplied feedback. Uh, periodically throughout this series, if I find that there is a good or a, a big decision to make, I can, of course, leave it up to you guys and put that big decision on the poll. So, the last we left off, we were heading back to the UC Cities, now with our 32,000 cats. Cats is the currency of uh, Kenshi. And uh, we are looking to buy the freedom of some slaves. The reason why I haven't um, settled down anywhere... Oh my god, there's so many bandits around here. I'm trying to thread the needle between them all. The reason why I haven't settled down is I'd like to to leave where I live up to you all. Um, so instead of me picking, um, that, that, of, that information, of course, is on the poll. So what I'm going to do now is adjust a little bit of my inventory to lower weight. Making sure that everybody has what they should have. And we're heading to Hang and... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Stoat, Heft, and Shobatai. Uh-oh. And it looks like more Dust Bandits. So they move at about 15 or so. Uh, so if I want to outrun them, i got to micromanage this real quick. Let's have everyone... But Queen and Thorns turn around. Queen. Because what will end up happening is if they knock me unconscious, they will try to butcher Thorns for meat. I do not want this to happen. Alright, so now everybody is moving as fast as these dust bandits, roughly. I might need to make some adjustments. So Ron is a little slow, comparatively. Um... So what I could do is lower the weight and give share some of the weight with others. So all I need to do is get him up to like 17 would be ideal. Oh, but now she's at 15. Um, at 16, yeah, they're starting to attack me. If I run into the Deadlands, I will have a natural advantage because the Deadlands are not safe for Greenlanders like these raiders. Um, they will melt their skin off. Sounds awful, and I'm sure it is. Uh, let's go ahead and ditch the Ninja Blade for weight. I'm going to ditch pretty much everything the Queen's wearing. Alright, so she's at 18. Beep's at 17. Let's... Split some of this off. Nope, can't do that. 17, 17, 18, 17. Alright, so Silver Shade can carry a little bit more weight. Okay, but not that much weight. This is a very careful game of who gets to hold what. So 19, 18, 17. So pretty much everyone's at 18 or over, which should allow me to outrun these guys, because all of them are at 15 or so. So as long as I don't double back and I run in more or less a straight line, I should be okay. Additionally, uh, because they are in the acid lands, their flesh is going to melt off, and mine won't. Oh, oh boy, but now there's gutters. Oh, but I was able to ditch the gutters onto them. The gutters being the beak things. Uh, there is no way I could take on a beak thing. These beak things 
as you can see, have already clobbered a few of them to death. Now, there is a city in the Deadlands. Uh, it is a higher tech city. Uh, so the idea behind Kenshi as a whole, it is sort of a, it is sort of a, um, a world in a dark age, if you will. Um, it used to be more glorious. It used to be more higher tech. And a lot of those empires have fallen. So there is some remnants of high tech. But most of... Oh, boy. Yeah, swim. Swim, you little arseholes. Uh, most of those high-tech civilizations are basically shadows of their former self. Um, so now that I'm on the edge of the water here, I am... This is a really good place to pick a fight with them because they're going to be melting into the pool of acid that they're standing in. And I will just basically keep them in this pool of acid with my melee layers. In fact, I'm going to fan out my shooters and put thorns down. Because ideally, I would, uh, I'd loot this dust boss. But I don't want any permanent, oh, come on, get him. I don't want any permanent injuries with my guys. This dust bandits are putting up a pretty good fight. Anyone that gets knocked unconscious is pretty, all of them are pretty much dead for good. Because of the acidic environment. Uh, you were put on hold. Let's take you off a of hold. I'm going to pick you back up. And as you can see, yeah, their, their bodies are literally sizzling here. Uh, Beep's arm is pretty badly wounded. We're going to have to patch that up. Uh, at this point... Anyone that was chasing me is probably slowed down by the gutters or melting. So I can encumber myself a little bit more. In fact, I will do just that. I will put thorns down and, and run at thorn speed. Um, I'm going to pick up the dust boss. And treat him like a uh, backpack. So... Green, let's go loot the dust boss and just stuff Mr. Dust Boss up with uh with gear. It's a good way to carry extra weight. Oddly enough, anyone that's like on your shoulders or whatever, um uh, if you add weight to them, they don't add weight to you. It's like a a black hole of weight. So if I put stuff on the boss that's there, um Queen isn't getting weighed down at all. The only other problem is the dust boss is the, the weather is slowly melting him, melting his flesh, uh, to the point where soon I won't be able to uh, turn him in dead or alive. He'll just be dead. So we'll have to get moving. Alright, so let's follow Thorns and head to the Scrap House in Black Desert City. This is one... So I was explaining the tech levels because Black Desert City is a skeleton um, city. Skeletons are robots. They're not actually bony skeletons. They're a sentient species of robot. Um, the queen, in fact, is part skeleton because she has this weird robotic uh, birthing hive thing attached to her. Uh, I forget the lore behind that, but uh, it doesn't much matter. It, uh, just to know that she is part robot skeleton. Um, and the skeletons aren't technophobes. They're technology incarnate. So their city is a little bit higher tech and has a lot better stuff. The scrap house is one of the uh, wealthier um, trade centers of the whole game. And it's right in the middle of the, uh, the, the Black Desert. Or the uh, Deadlands. Now, if you weren't a Hiver, Hivers are immune to the acid that is raining and is full of all the puddles and all that. But if you um, if you weren't immune to that, like let's say it harmed you, uh, you would need to wear certain clothing to resist uh, the damage that you would take here.
All right, so I believe this heart protector is actually Queen's that she's wearing. This horse chopper was the bandits. And this was bandit stuff too. And then uh, for me to properly sell all my loot, I need to uh, make this bandit nice and naked, right? Uh, the skeletons here um, don't so much have, as far as I know, a government. They're sort of a um, self-governing, um, they're pretty friendly, they're not, you know, the, you're not going to have issues, you're not going to have problems with most skeletons. They're not going to pick fights with you unless you fight with them first. They're, uh, they're certainly not pacifists, in fact, skeletons are some of the toughest in the entire game because they don't bleed, they're mechanically based, uh... But they're not um, xenophobic or hateful like some of the other species uh, in this game. And as you can see, they do come in different shapes and sizes. So Quinn looks significantly different than some of these guards. Uh, they are also robotic spiders and stuff like that. Alright, so at this point... Um, Oh, Ron still has a few extra things to sell. There we go. Uh, let's see. I'm moving at 17, but we're all, of course, following thorns. So let's go back to following thorns. As much as I'd like to take a nice rest here and stay here, uh, the bounty on my shoulders is going to die well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to patch him up inside. Right now, he has blood loss KO. Um, the acid rain is basically melting him. Oops, but the moment I put him down, the guards are going to throw him out. Alright, well, I'll wait for the guard to put him down, and then I'll patch him up. Put him down, please. Poor dust boss is melting. Oh. He got back up. Alright, so let's first aid him real quick. He is pretty sufficiently unconscious. Pick him up. And following thorns to head to a way station. Now, I do have the advantage of playing Kenshi significantly before this series, so I do know more or less where I'm headed. I know where a lot of the way stations are. In fact, there's a lot of secrets in Kenshi that I won't spoil for you guys. Um, there are very easy ways to become a lot stronger and a lot wealthier very, very quickly if you know the right places to go, the right places to loot, or even the right people to talk to. Um, but I'm not looking to... Sh for any shortcuts. I am playing this sort of role-playing as if I was the queen. And uh, with that said, the queen doesn't cheat her way to her kingdom. She fights for it honorably. Or at least that's how I'm role-playing this uh, dead hive queen. Alright, so we're out of the grade... We're out of the deadlands, meaning that Mr. Bandit here um, won't be melting from the rain. We're carrying him because there's a bounty on his head. It's sort of like slavery, but with some extra steps, right? Got to turn him in. He's he's imprisoned. He's not a slave. All right, so we got our way station here that we're headed to. I doubt we'll be able to hire any extra hivers there, but uh, at the very least, we'll we can have a warm bed if we want it. Uh, Beep's arm is pretty gnarly. But I might not stop here because there's there's not much to do here. It's just a way station. It's not a stay station, right? I'm hoping that um, Thorns matures a little bit soon so that he moves a little bit faster. All right, so Mr. Wee, that's, I guess, your name. Uh, what can you do for me? You could sell me backpacks that I don't need. I... You know, Queen's meds are pretty low, so I'm going to buy one stack of meds. And let's take a look. You see Pacifier. Ah, so here's a Drifter Skeleton. I'm curious what he has to say. 
he's for hire. I'm I'm obviously only adding hivers. But it's pretty rare to see a uh, skeleton that you can hire out. They are one of the rarer species. As, as you may have already noticed, the vast majority of everyone are human sort of Greenlanders. Those are the most populous in this continent. All the Dust Bandits are Greenlanders, and most of the... Um, all the Holy Nation, more or less, are Greenlanders. Most of the UC... Not most of the UC. The UC is a, a little bit of a mix of Greenlanders and Shek and other people. So, I've got to be careful about where I'm walking and what I'm doing. I'm, once again, entering somewhat of a danger zone. I'm trying to avoid the eye as much as possible. The eye is a zone that, uh... That is a little unforgiving if uh, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time without spoiling anything. So I'd like to avoid it. Tengu's Vault is a Holy Nation vault. Um, definitely not going to get too close to that because it is really well guarded and I would die. Or be imprisoned. And it's right on the edge of the Holy Nation uh, Empire or their lands or whatever. You've got... Um, You've got the uh, Ocran base right around here and then Tengu's Vault. Something to mess with at a later date, sure, but uh, not quite yet. So here we are. Thorns has um, leveled up his athletics enough to move at 11 speed. That's good. He's getting stronger. Definitely getting stronger. And... Oh... This not good. I'm glad I paused. So, skimmers. Uh, so, Silver Shade's already knocked unconscious. I managed to pick Thorns up. Silver Shade is dying. He got hit in the stomach really hard. I'm going to have Queen break off, and I was hoping... These skimmers seem to, like, just load in on top of my head. Alright, so what I'm going to do with Queen is... Drop Thorns off here. And... Try to ditch... These skimmers. I'm playing sort of like a cat and mouse game. Because I need to get back to Silvershade. And... F oh! The other skimmer caught up to me. And now beeps down. Oh boy. All right, Queen, I need you to first aid Silver Shade. Stop doing anything else. Ron and Green, you're both healthy enough to run away, so do that. Beep's head got smashed pretty hard. Silver Shade is getting patched up. I'm now able to pick him up. The uh, Dust Bandit is low on my order of things to help. So I'm going to carry Silver to uh, relative safety and go heal Beep. Very glad I bought those meds. Uh, looks like Beep got a lick in or two. Yep, barely. Skimmers are tough. Alright, let's pick Beep up. Have him have everyone rendezvous far away from the danger here. Uh, Ron, pick up Silver Shade, and then we'll all follow Thorns. That could have gone worse. Because Ron and Queen are fast enough to carry their compatriots, their fellow Hivers, without uh, without Thorns being able to outrun them. All right, who do we have here? We've got Holy Nation. That's not good. I basically have to decide who I want to stand closer to, the Holy Nation, or... Oh, and more skimmers. Now, the real issue is that in an all-out... Oh, so there's the Holy Nation beating up a skimmer. I'm not going to get involved, even though there'd be some looting and money in it. Uh, it's too dangerous. This stupid skimmer needs to stop cutting me off here. Oh, again, they pop out of their underground um, 
caverns and are jumping me. So they're territorial, but they're not sort of man-eating. So I can leave. Um, God, they're really annoying. I can leave Silver and Beep down, and sort of just full out sprint run. I'm going to send Thorns to run to the next zone, because they're kind of ignoring him. No, they're not. Now they're on him. Thorns got a critical hit to the leg. Okay, nice. Not nice that I keep getting jumped by scammers, but... Uh... Alright, let's pick these guys back up. Now, one of the advantages of animals, they do heal up fast, and they have more than two legs. They're not bipedal, of course. Um, so, even though Thorns has a really injured uh, left foreleg, uh, still full speed. Yep, so they mentioned that they have enough bribe many to survive this place. Um, the UC are full of nasty people. Uh, they're full of slavers and manhunters and all sorts. Uh, there's a bounty on this peasant here, but he's a hiver, and I'm never going to claim a hiver's bounty. I, I don't fight hivers. I am a hiver. Here's a slaver caravan. A lot of these guys won't necessarily aggro on you unless you give them reason. Reason being um, that you are yourself a slave or that you've aligned yourself with the anti-slavers. And I haven't done that yet. So, although I have to be wary of manhunters because manhunters and slavers can turn on you, especially when you're unconscious, they'll just turn you into a slave. Um... At this moment, Beep and Silver Shade are being carried, so they're not laying on the ground, and therefore won't be uh, turned into a slave. So, um... The gate guard very lazily glanced over my stuff. A lot of my stuff is stolen off of bandits and the like. Um, so... In escaping from those uh, those skimmers, I wasn't able to keep the uh, dust boss. I, I think it would have been a little bit too encumbering. So we left the dust boss behind, um, meaning that we will not be able to trade him in for, uh, for bounty. Uh, what I can do is spend some of my money joining the Shinobi Thieves. So let me, uh, let me go try to find the correct person to talk to. Oh, here's the Thief boss. And their cover fee, or their entrance fee, or whatever you want to call it, is ten grand. It's expensive, uh, but it does come with benefits. One of which is um, resting and bedding. So it's a high upfront cost. But now that I'm doing business in this town, what I could do is uh, use their beds for free. Right? That's that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good benefit. Um. I'm going to have pretty much everyone rest, except for Queen. Queen's going to do business on her own. Uh, another benefit is access to their traders. So let me see if I can't find one of them. Here's the Shinobi trader. And the traders have things called Small Thieves Backpacks and Regular Thieves Backpacks, which are really, really good, and I'm going to buy one. Uh, the advantage of this backpack, if you're curious, is um, it doesn't really come with any uh, combat penalties, but it can store stuff, uh, which lightens the load of the wearer. Um, they also have some pretty good armor, and it's discounted, uh, so you're paying less money for this armor. Um, I might go ahead and buy the black plate jacket. Now, the black plate jacket would not be good for a crossbow person because it has crossbow penalties on it, which means you're attacking in only 80% of your total speed. But at the moment, I came to the city to free some slaves. So what I'm going to do is just 
that. I'm going to walk around and see about going to a slave market. Uh, taking a look at this guy's... Uh, there's really nothing I need there. Alright, so this is a farm shop. This is a bar. I could head into the bar as well. The bar potentially has hivers, although I doubt it. No, this bar is dr dramatically empty. Alright, so let's head over to the slave market. And take a look around. There's the slaver boss here. And they have Streak, who's a hiver, to buy. And that's it. Alright, well I guess I'll buy Streak. Streak here is now joined my crew. And, um... He... Because I purchased his freedom, I'm just gonna drop his hiver prison shackles. I'll be sending him on... Bringing him on his merry way. I'm sort of curious what the bank has in terms of supplies. So let's go and check. Is the banker asleep? Uh, there's no one to talk to. Okay. So what I'm going to do with Streak here is feed him because he's malnourished. Generally, these slavers keep their slaves malnourished to keep them um, unable to resist uh, their 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 captors dark yes but you know it's the way it is uh, all right so this guy here streak I'm gonna go to the plastic surgeon and I'm gonna give him a new name Oboro uh, that's gonna be this little dude's name and in the Plastic Surgeon, you can also change things like certain amount of looks and stances and things like that. Um, hivers don't have as many options as some of the other races because they're sort of drone-like and they all sort of look the same. So, although he doesn't need sleep, I'm going to put him to sleep because, you know, he's, he's had a long day or whatever. I'm also going to trade some of the excess meat over to Queen so she can carry it. Uh, Oboro here just ate some food. And uh, let's take a quick status check. So yeah, we still have definitely some health problems here. The beds that I'm laying on are not as uh, regenerative as regular real beds. These are um, just like sleeping mats. Which heal you at a fraction of the of the um, efficiency. One of the big reasons to buy your way into the Shinobi Thieves um, alliance, or whatever you want to call it, is the benefit of all their training dummies, which can allow you to train up your skills. Um, I'm not interested in trading dummies, and the reason being I want to level up my skills legitimately, meaning fight for it. Um, so, I'm not going to train at them. I'm, I'm only really going to level up uh, fighting others. So, while everyone is sleeping off their injuries, I'm having Queen go solo to Stoat. She is fast enough to probably, or almost certainly, be able to outrun anything um, that might try to target her on her way there. Uh, because she's just simply faster than most of her, most of the other people in the group. And in fact, if I take off her pants, she even runs a little bit faster. The pants have a uh, athletics penalty to them. And that gives uh, everyone else an opportunity to heal up. She's running at 25 miles an hour. That is like Olympic sprinter speed. Over these distances, it's like record-breaking Olympic sprinter. But Hivers have a uh, very natural ability to level up their athletics quickly. They are a fast species. Little stilt-footed Hivers. And this was what I would look like in normal run speed. Now the uh, Dust Storm here isn't giving me any penalties because I have this wonderful Swamp Ninja Mask that protects me from dust. 
but it is a very dusty region. Alright, so here I am in yet another UC City looking to buy the freedom of some slaves. I've gone through a considerable amount of my food, but again, she eats a lot of food. That's what she does. She's the queen. High metabolism and all. Taking a look around, yep, here's the slave market. Sometimes there's more than one per city. I don't have all these cities memorized, but I believe Stoat just has the one. Looking around, that seems to be true. There's some other bars, though, that I could check out. And let's see. Is there... I could either talk to the slave boss or just take a look at the cages here. But some of the cages are upstairs. So I'll just ask the slave boss, do you have any hivers? And they don't. They have mostly Greenlanders and, and like, one um, Scorchlander. A Scorchlander's... Kind of like a Greenlander, I guess, but they're they're less farmer and more crafter for their racial benefits. Wow, it is dusty. I can't see a thing. It's a big old haboob. Uh, there's also some slave cages here. This looks somewhat like an auction block. Um, again, another auction block, but no one's in them. Uh, what I was going to do is head into the bar to see if there's any free Greenland or uh, Hivers to recruit. So there's a bar in there. And we'll take a look. Uh, Jaglonger. Yep. He's a prince and he'll join us. Uh, nice. So, you, my friend here, are going to be named... Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. Hello. I'm not going to customize you other than giving you a name. And welcome to the group. So, even though there wasn't any slaves here, it was fruitful. Princes are uh, are rare, so it's, it's always nice to get one. Uh, let's see. I don't see any other hivers in here. Uh, he is not nearly the speed that she is. He doesn't have the sort of athletics benefit. Oh, there's a hiver over here, too. Bin. Looks like a drone. Um, my place isn't in a drunken bar. I belong at part of a colony outside on the farms. If you're looking to team up, I'm only 4,000. Sure. And he's a hiver work drone. So we're going to name him, this is kind of a funny name, but again, it's after one of my patrons, Meat Pants. It's funny how the drone was significantly more expensive than the prince. Uh, but you know what? Freedom is freedom, and a hiver is a hiver. Uh, so I'll take what I can get. So that's two there. Very nice. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, maybe there's other bars. This general shop. No, I think we're out of bars here. So what I'm going to do is send uh, Meat Pants and Hella down to hang to go hang with the rest of the crew. Pun partially intended. Uh, this does mean that I'm going to have to micromanage a little bit harder, uh, given that I have like three groups of people. But um, Yeah, so this Manhunter is just calling me an escape slave. I'm not one, as you can see here. I am I'm not flagged as a slave. So he's just trying to beat me up and imprison me for no other reason that he can. Um, A.K.A. they're jerks. And I don't really want to talk to anyone here. I want to get out of the UC pretty much as quick as I can. The... Sand Ninja over here is chasing me down, and he's faster than I am. I might be able to just juke him enough. Oh, yeah. This ninja is dead now. I just ran him through a group of sergeants. Mean, but I absolutely needed to do it. All right, this stone camp here, I think, might be have some slaves as well. 
All right, so Meat Pants, can you follow Hella? Just safety in numbers. Not really, but I can pretend. And the Queen here is heading to the Stone Camp to see if there's any slaves that she can buy the freedom of. I worry a little bit less about her because any uh, enemies that want to do her harm, she'll easily be able to outrun. All right, so is this a slave market? Yes, this is indeed a slave shop. Let's take a look. Slaver boss. They have nothing in stock. I guess they put them all to work. Or something. Uh, this is a slaver bar. Uh, again. Yeah, so this is a slave that is working. No one in the cages. No one to purchase their freedom of. Uh, we do have some slaves out here. Now, if I was powerful enough, uh, if you're wondering, I could take on all the guards. Let's say I was really strong. I could take all the guards and free the slaves and allow the Hiver slaves, which they only have one. His name is Double, uh, to, uh, to join. But, um, I don't have that kind of military might yet. Alright, let's check back on Hella and Meat Pants. Now, Hella... And meat pans do not look like slaves. I didn't even purchase them as slaves. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean a man, enterprising manhunter or slaver won't say, Hey, you look like a slave and try to kill them, or rather capture them. Uh, that does happen and happen often because uh, they're nasty. But as long as you can outrun them, you're okay. So the more that uh, Hella runs, the more athletics he's going to gain. He's already up a mile an hour to 17. At 16, I can't outrun a skimmer. At 17, he should be able to outrun most skimmers. And these guys, these new guys, Meat Oboro, Hella, and Meat Pants, they all basically start with zero stats. Meat Pants might have started with a little bit more stats than the other two because he was more expensive. So we started off with a significant farming stat and a little bit of athletics, but not much else. Man, these guards are riled up. Someone kicked the hive. I don't know what they're doing here. Um, all right, so Queen already has the beautiful small thieves backpack, but that doesn't stop me from potentially shopping for more. The more of these small backpacks, the better. And, of course, there is zero here. Um, glorious holy map I will buy because it allows me to know what to avoid. The map of the UC City, sure, I'll buy that as well. These aren't too expensive. I'm not ready to go into a tech library, so I'm not going to buy that. The tech libraries are um, like ruins. So the map just popped a bunch of the holy cities. So Stack and Blister Hill. I already knew about Bad Teeth and the Holy Mines on my map. And then um, the other map gave me Brink, Black Scratch, and some villages in a slave market. Uh, useful information to know. And you can often buy maps from the Traveler's Store. So then I'm also looking, let's go into the bar first to find some free hivers, if there are any. It'd be unusual, but not impossible. I found two in the last place. It's also not nighttime, it's 10 in the morning, so the uh, the bar is not as as full of patrons as it normally is. General shop. Here's another bar. I can poke into there. No one's going to be in the noble house that I want to talk to. Um, bakery. Thieves. Uh, the Shinobi Thieves might have some other backpacks that I can uh, take a look. So there's a thief fence here who basically buys anything stolen. And someone that's uh, interacting with the thief fence... Uh, this barman is not so much talking to me. That's sort of a, a bug that I can fix if it uh, tends to be a continuous problem. This fence has... And fences, when you sell stuff, they they you can't sell at full cost. When you buy stuff, you pay half off. So these drifter leather pants, I'm going to buy for myself. And I'm going to sell... I'm actually not going to sell my rag skirt. The reason why I bought the pants is... Um, they don't come with the same movement penalties that the other ones do. Um, so I'll be able to move faster in them. Let me go sell the other pants I have. 
You know what? I'll, I'll hold on to these pants for uh, meat pants. Because meat pants has high enough athletic skills to benefit from them. Alright, so here's yet another slave market. And they have Meathead, Leko, and Sorgal. Sorgal, wow. He is a southern prince. That's kind of cool. I'll buy him. And I'll buy everyone. Meathead. And Leko. Now, the issue here is um, that slavers are going to want to call these slaves what they are, slaves. Uh, which is rather dangerous, because if they think that they're slaves, they'll attack me for them. Like, thinking that I'm freeing them or whatever. So I have to be a little careful about, uh, about who I antagonize and all that. So Sergal here is... I believe he looks like a southern um, hive prince, which is a very interesting recruit to be offered. Uh, because they're all malnourished, I'm going to buy some chew sticks so that they can eat. Uh, because I have the mod of guaranteed uh, slave recruiting, uh, let's just ditch these shackle. Uh, you know what? Oh, I didn't mean to put those on. Because I put them back on, I'm going to look like a slave, which is... I'll do it to both, just so they both have the same um, penalties. Uh, so I bought some food so I can share it with these guys. Uh, let's pop into the Shinobi Thieves. So I'm going to be looking like a slave for... How long? Uh, it, it will go away once I leave the area. Uh, queen. We're in here to see if there's any backpacks. So where do you have a trader? I don't see... Are they outside? Nope. That's the thief boss. Plastic surgeon. Trader. First, go to the trader. And we'll go ahead and sell these shackles. And they do have one backpack, so I'll give that to Meathead. Um, okay. I don't want to buy too much armor because I don't want to spend all my money that way. And then next, the uh, what I'm going to do is have Meathead and Leko stay here. And I'm going to run outside with the Southern Prince to get him to agree to stay with me. Uh, so Meathead here is going to talk to the plastic surgeon and get his non-slave name. And his non-slave name is going to be Pillar. Again, after one of my uh, one of my patrons there. And let's see. Uh, that about sums up all of my... Uh, all of the patrons that are waiting for names. So Leko and whatever this prince's name is going to end up being. They can uh, wait around. Uh, for when uh, I have more people that want things named after them. Alright, so once I leave town enough, this prince should then be, you know what? He should say, you know what? I will... Oh, no. He's... Said he's out of here. Huh. Interesting. I have the guaranteed slave recruit mod, and yet uh, he's not being recruited. I don't know if that's because he's a southern prince. I kind of just keep picking him up. I'm seeing if I can change his mind. Uh, all right. I guess I'll let him go. I was kind of excited to have a, uh, a southern prince, but no, I'm not going to shoot him. It's not who I am. I don't. I don't shoot my shoot fellow hivers, even if he is a southern hiver. All right. So the other issue I'm going to have is, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. The other issue I'm going to have is trying to get these people because I threw their shackles back on 
to get them to a place where they're not going to be hunted for being ex-slaves. Uh, so that's going to take a little bit. So I had Hella and Meat Pants running in. Uh, unfortunately, I think I right-clicked and put them in some sort of residence. Uh, which is kind of funny. So Hella's now moving at 17 and Meat Pants at 20. And then Pillar, Lenker, Lenko, and uh, Queen are going to rendezvous. At this point, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I have 11 people, so 10 Queen's Guards. So I'm kind of at my population limit, temp like the initial one. Um, so I'm not planning on recruiting anyone until I can start that hive up. So what I'm going to do is have... Uh, Queen follow the slowest member and have them start to run out of town before any slavers recognize them as ex-slaves and toss uh, cuffs on them or whatever. I would give them the armored rag skirt, but um, that would just slow them down further. Oh, yeah, here's a lost drone. This is just a hiveless drone wandering naked in the desert. Really not a good place for a drone. It's really too bad I can't talk to drones like that and say, hey, you know what? Join me. Um, there are some mods that do that, but of course, uh, the mods, the decision on what mods I include are, uh, are going to be made through public polling and not through stuff I want to add. Uh, what did this assassin kill? This assassin knocked out a vagrant. Okay. Well, guys, that's about all the time I have for this episode. It has come to a close. So I just want to do a quick reminder to you all that today is, of course, vote day, which means that if you'd like to, go to ronamontoc.com, go to Discord, or go back to the info card at the start of this episode and cast your vote about the different goals, rules, mods, and settlements that I might make uh, during this series. If you would like uh, this new uh, Hiver named after you and you're a patron of mine, just let me know. Leko needs a name. And uh, thank you all so very much for watching. I'll catch you all next episode, and I'll let you know how this vote goes. Uh, adios.